All right, so in previous examples, when we've wanted to work with pixels, we've either drawn the image to the canvas and then access the canvas's pixels, or we've directly accessed the pixels in the image, made changes to them in place, and then drawn the result on the screen. But there's times when this isn't gonna work so well. For example, if we wanna be able to preserve the original image and make a copy that transforms it, um, or if we wanna have user interface elements on the screen, like um, if you're making a drawing app and you're making changes, you wouldn't want the like buttons and interface and stuff like that to be included with the image itself. You'd want those to be separate. Um, and we call this an off-screen buffer. And basically what we can do is we can make a blank image um, that's the same size as our source. And then we can copy over pixels and make changes and stuff like that without actually touching the original. Um, so I've gone ahead, loaded my image again here, and um, I'm gonna make a second image called output. So I have one called source. A source gets loaded in preload, but output, is gonna be equal to, or we're gonna set it using a function. Um, and in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna swap the pixels randomly from locations in the original image. Um, so I'm gonna make a function to do this because it's a little lengthy. And I know I wanna put in my source as the starting point. Um, and then I need to tell it what probability or what chance it should be that it's gonna do the swap. In this case, I'm gonna say 50%. Um, okay, so now I can create my function. Uh, called swap pixels. And we know it's gonna take an input image and the chance of a swap here. Okay, so the first thing that we probably uh, need to do is create this, um, uh, an empty image for us to work with. And we can do this right inside of our function. So I can say um, uh, output, equals create image and create image then you just uh, creates a blank image um, and we give it a width and a height and we want this to be the same as our input. So I say input.width input.height here. Um, we could then just return that output and let's see the result. Output, if I can type it. Here we go and we see nothing and that's because we the uh, output is blank. It's just an empty image. Um, so now we can fill in kind of the gaps here and do this swap. So of course need more for loops, lots of for loops. For loops less than input dot height. Same thing for X. Okay. Um, oh, and before we access the inputs pixels, we need to call input dot load pixels. And we actually also need to do the same for output. So we need to say output.loadPixels as well. Then down here when we're done, we're going to say output.updatePixels. Um, but we don't need to do that for input because we no longer care about the input. We're not sending the input back, so we only need to update the pixels for our output. Okay, so we made a blank image. We're walking through the pixels. Um, for this example, we're going to use the um, index in the pixels array rather than get and set because we're gonna start to get into more complicated um, process here that's gonna really get slow if we don't. So if you need to go back and refresh yourself, um, uh, that the video is better pixel access and it'll show you how to do that. Um, so we need to convert our X and Y into an index in that list of pixels. And if you remember, the secret formula is Y times the image width plus X times four. The four is because we have red, green, blue, alpha, um, and so we need to jump by fours in that array. Um, and then we're gonna say, you know, if a random value between zero and 100 is less than the chance that we wanna swap, um, then we're gonna do the swap. Otherwise, we're gonna just put the pixel as it is. And so let's do that first, because that's a little easier. Uh, for this, we would just say output.pixels at the index is equal to um, input.pixels at the index. And this is our, let's make a little room here. That's our red value. <laughs> We're gonna really run out of space here. That's our red value um, at the index. And we can copy this for green, blue, and alpha. So Remember, red is always the first color, then index plus one 
will give us our green. Index plus two is our blue. And index plus three is our alpha. Um, now I realize this is kind of a pain. It's a little messy, but this does, we're gonna be using this a lot. So get, get used to it. And copy paste is gonna help you here. Um, so now if I run this, you can see that our image looks kind of cool. It's like pointillism. There's a lot of empty space. And that's because 50% of the time, it's just not drawing any pixels there. And 50% of the time, it's drawing um, these other pixels. So this looks pretty cool. Let's then add the swap here. So I'll delete this. Um, so the first thing I think I want to do is create a random x and y point to grab a pixel from. So I'll say rx equals random between 0 and input.width. Now, remember, random gives us a floating point number. It's a number with a decimal place. And our pixel positions are integers, they're whole numbers, because you can't be at one and a half pixels. Now, I think it won't give you an error if you send it in. It'll just convert it. But it's probably better to convert this to an integer using the int command. This is just going to round that value. And then we'll do the same thing for y. So y will be random between 0 and the height. So this is our new position that we're going to grab a pixel from and put it in at x, y. So then we want to compute our swap index, which will be the same idea, except it's ry times input.width plus rx times 4. So this is our two. Now we have our regular index and the index of the pixel we want to swap. And then <laughs> it's more of this. We can actually just grab, let's grab this guy here. Maybe we can save a little typing. So now here our output will be at the regular index, but our input instead of at index, we want to grab it at swap index. And then swap index plus one. So we just basically have two indices that we can grab from. And I realize, yeah, we're totally running out of space here. Um, it, it's kind of hard to read in this. But if we run this, let's see. OK, cool. So now we get half the time the pixels are normal, and then half the time they're a random swap from our input image. Um, and that's pretty much it. The, the full example does the same thing, but it's interactive. So it lets you determine the chance that the swapping is happening. And hopefully it gives you an idea of why we might not want to change our input image. So for example, this is interactive. If I destroy the input image, I can't change to be a lower percent or something like that, because that data is already gone. Um, and similarly here, because I'm displaying text on the screen, I want to keep that separate from the image data itself, um, so that if I was to save this, and if you hit the letter S, it'll do that. It won't save it with uh, um, text on it. So we'll see lots of examples where you want to create this like second blank image to work. And it's just useful, I think, to see how you might do that and to plan ahead a bit for what makes sense for your um, specific idea.